Right, start of side two on the 29th of June 2006. I've been all over the place today. Sudbury, Long Melford, Kirtling, where I found a small sort of Roman Catholic church and, not, and a big castle-like building. I've been all around the countryside, up and down little lanes, nooks and crannies. Um, I've now found Colton, I was just determined to get to Colton, and there's a little church, I've parked up on this bank of the road, there must be a cricket battery going on, there's lots of other cars parked up as well, um, so I'm going to go and have a look around the church now. Right, what's this church called, I wonder? Um, I don't know what it's called yet, no name. It's got a couple of crosses on the, leaned up against a tree. Emily and Emma Phillips. Emma died July the 21st, 1916, age 35 or 85. And the other one died, she's 22, in 1897. But so far, there's no name for the church. But it is at Colton, near Borough Green, near Brinkley. And I managed to find it. Looks very, very derelict, very, very forgotten and sad, to be quite honest. Um, let's have a look for a few names. Christopher Mark Cole died 2002. Age 22. It's got a picture of a golfer on the on the grave. Um, Hillier, that's or Hullier. That's 1942. Age 76. William, another Hullier. Died 1940. Age 21. Another well, young one. Another Hallier, there's a lot of Halliers here. Right, hold on a moment. Norden, who died in 1973, age 62, another Hallier. Frederick, passed away 1989, age 73. So another one, Hilda Hallier, 1991, age 56. Walter George, died 1973, age 60, and Dorothy May, who died 1968, age 29, so there's a few of them, obviously a lot of graves have been uprooted, I haven't got proper shoes on for going through brambles, but there is one with a leaning cross, there's lots scattered in and out of brambles, although so I haven't got me walking shoes on. So if there are any of ours in here, um, somebody pain, I ain't gonna be able to see them. Like I said, they've had a massive clean-up job in here. It's a pity I can't get a picture of it. It's got, um, two rusty old bells. <laughs> the fact that it didn't even have a name sometimes sums up a church. A little portrait with a black door and leaded windows. Doubt if it'll be open. Oh, the porch is open. Oh yes, it is open. St. Peter's Church, Carlton. Smells very musky. Ah, yeah, that is open. A font, an organ. Um, smells very unused. The church is apparently unrestored, although rendered. The nave and chancel 
are 14th and 15th century. The font is also 15th century and has two shields with symbols of the resurrection. Um, the two bells in the bell tower are pre-Reformation. A monument to Thomas Clare, rector of the parish, who died in 1793, lists all his children, except one, who died in Newt Sea. The exception Charlotte died at 13 is buried beneath a stone in the floor. <coughs> Doesn't look like it's used very much, it's in a very poor state. Got a few plaques on the wall. The Reverend Thomas Clark, rector of this parish. We died age 53, 1795, and all his children, uh, by Hannah, his wife. And you've got uh, memory to Augusta Louisa, the beloved wife of the Reverend William Samuel Parr Wilder. Died in 1861, age 66. And he died. No, that was his wife, I think. And then you've got Emma Grace Marianne Cosby. church and there's a stone with an oak, somebody oak on it. I'm sure there was oaks that came. Family oaks. Could be Maria, I'm not sure on that. It just propped up against the wall. Somebody oak, anyway. And I know we've got oaks in this place. Can't we? Could be Thomas. Thomas Oak. And that's interesting. Found somebody just propped up against by the side of the wall there. As I came out of the porchway. I do revisit Carlton later on because I do find the brother of my great-great-great-grandfather, Edward Oak... I find his brother Thomas, that is that stone, and I go back a week or so later and put some flowers, um, and I also write a little message inside the church that I found him. It's almost as if he was waiting for me. Really weird. See? You never know. Hardly any graves here, and there's one, possibly a relative of ours, propped up against the door. There. Need a bit of a clean up to see the dates. Yeah, Thomas Oak. I'm going to have another little clean up, see if I can get a date. Thomas Oak, who died June 8th, 1865. Yeah, he, he was 70 years old when he died. Like I said, pure chance that I came across him. Why he was left there, I don't know. There's lots and lots of stones gone missing around here. Um, you know, so it's pure chance I got, and I know that there was an oak somewhere linked around here. Carlton. I don't know why, but um, 
he could be the the last remaining one that's visible that we can see and it's just by chance I came I just decided to look at that stone it's just leaning up against the side there and it wasn't really readable but I spotted the oak which often stands out because the O often does stand out and I cleaned it up and uh, there's Thomas Oak there of course another thing I've got on disc the Suffolk Burial Index which gives details of 1.2 million burials from 1538 to 1900 from the Suffolk Family History Society um, so I've located some places where people are buried it's not always easy or hasn't been easy even though you might know they've died you, you don't always know where they've been buried so this is quite an in interesting index back to the original cassette of 2006 today I have come across three names a mason, a hassle and an oak three names I've been looking for and I found found three didn't find a brooks but uh, like I said this is a sad little church to be quite honest perhaps people don't bother coming here anymore didn't even you can tell bad it's looked after because it's They even hold services there. The services seem to be held at Brinkley, Stretchworth in Dellingham, Wesley Waterless, Borough Green, Old Colton on 16th of July. 16th of July. <coughs> That's the next service. But, um, it's obviously not really looked after much. Sad little church, but I found it, and good job I found it then. Because who knows when that stone will be smashed up or given away. I need to uh, look up that name again. Hopefully when I get back, have a quick look. link him up with the others. It's 18... Is it 96? Well, I can't remember the date, but I'll look it up on the census. Yeah, that is... That is interesting. Right, it's homeward bound now. There is a cricket field there. The church is next to a cricket field, surrounded by trees. It's got no big tower, nothing like that, just a little bell tower. And it looks forlorn, that's how I've described it. To get to a coal turn, you go through Dullingham and Brinkley. Carry on through Brinkley and you come to signposts to Colton. Because um, I've been going all over the place trying to find it. I'm quite enjoying just driving around the countryside, um, exploring the, where all my ancestors lived and farms and all that. I'm just, it's a lovely summer's night and I'm just roaming about. It's lovely. I'm just going to leave the tape on for a minute and see if it picks anything up as I'm talking, as I'm going along. Um, they'll probably pick up the sound of the motor. Well, I'm just going down country lanes. I'm not, I don't really know where I'm going. Like on, uh, on the left, right, there's a little shack, a wooden shack, which looks like somebody probably lives in it. Um, I've come out of Carlton, and I don't know where, I don't know where I'm going yet. I might have to turn around and come back. But you see, when you explore, um, these places, you often find, um, oh, no. oh, go on, go on, I think. Right, I was going to turn off then, uh, I'll turn 
around, I mean.
happening. Somewhere like that. But then they've got a lot of these water towers around. I don't know if this tape's going to turn out, because I've got the wind blowing off. <coughs> so this is just Sheila out and about in the Cambridgeshire, Suffolkshire counties. Exploring the countryside while she's got the opportunity. And um, she doesn't know where she's going, but then you see, when you don't know where you're going, you come across things. You know, you can find churches right in the middle of nowhere and things like that. I'll probably end up in Sudbury in a minute. The signpost says Haber Hill or Haber, Haber something or other. But I, I will turn back in a minute because I think I'm going further away. But I just wanted to just go to that next signpost. So I can do an, like a round trip. You know, it's nice to do round trips, I always think. Um, but you get a lot of cars that are whizzing round here. There's one coming up of course unbeknown to me at this period in time there was a serial killer about to start his murder spree in the Suffolk countryside mainly around Ipswich and, you know they just want to get on Claire, eight miles. We've been there. We went through there earlier. We're just 
doing a little tour. Of course, at that time, I mentioned Claire there, totally unaware that we've got ancient ancestors there, the Declares, who were very powerful, wealthy people um, who had influence high up, you know, and um, yeah, so as I'm rambling along there, mentioning Claire, and, but since then I've discovered a lot, and that will come on later discs. Back to 2006. this road now and tape is working and it's just like a patchwork quilt of English countryside with hedgerows with sort of wild cow parsley and other plants I don't know um, little roads winding in and out of the countryside I'm doing this for my family, you know, as well. My family, my grandchildren, my sisters, my mum who's passed away. They're all with me while I'm on this journey. Because um, I don't, as far as I know, you know, in over a hundred years, I doubt if anybody's done this. Um, you know, nobody thought about tracing their ancestors properly in the past. I've been given this opportunity to go out in my van on a beautiful summer's day and explore this beautiful, beautiful countryside. And in the distance I can see a church tower and every time I see a tower I want to go look at it. There's a car up behind me again. 